Uh, I am Andrew. This is my first Nasus. Um, this is only. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, I was a bit nervous, especially when I saw the size of the room, but then I started chatting to people and feel very welcome already. So thank you. Um, I didn't really know what to present other than that I wanted to present something, so I decided to present exactly the same as I presented at New Zealand's Geocart conference a couple of months ago. Um, so I know that Maraid was there, so you can leave now if you want, Maraid. Um, <laughs> Basically, I'm going to just give a bit of a breakdown of how I create one of my styles of maps. It is like this. Um, I call it my perspective line work style. Um, I do it monthly for Wilderness Magazine in New Zealand, which is a national uh, hiking magazine. Um, and I use Blender. So let's... Oh, and over the course of uh, the last couple of years, I've done... Uh, a few of these for Wilderness Magazine, so here's a wee selection of them. Um, all New Zealand based, all mountain based, um, across both islands, and the one that I'm going to be focusing on is this one. Um, for anyone who knows New Zealand or wants to go, this is at the top end of Lake Wanaka in the Southern Alps, um, and it's a three-day loop up in the mountains that involves flying in, which is the dotted line along the bottom. So, here we go. I use QGIS. In my day-to-day -day job, uh, in my whole career, I've used ArcGIS, but I can't afford a license as a freelancer, so I use QGIS. Uh, I mainly use, well, I use Blender for all of the 3D, um, and then the license that I do pay for is Illustrator for all of the labeling. So my inspiration for it, before I get into it, um, I am an avid fan of the outdoors. Uh, I've been reading sort of biographies of various mountaineers over the years and always see uh, in the older ones maps and images like these. This is from uh, a couple of Chris Bonington's uh, biographies. And they're all hand-drawn, slightly schematic, um, and I just really like them, but I can't draw. So I wanted to try and find a way of recreating something similar, but using a computer to do it. So, to Blender. Uh, for those who aren't familiar with Blender, it's probably mostly known for its photorealistic rendering. Um, so creating 3D models, making them look like real things, and outputting some kind of video or image. However, it also has Freestyle, which is a uh, non-photorealistic renderer, which detects edges and creases in the model, and then you can apply vector line work um, or fills to it. So this is uh, the exact same. This is Suzanne, for those not familiar, Suzanne the monkey from Blender. Um, so Freestyle, you have the silhouettes. Um, so this is literally just the edges of the model. And then you can detect the creases as well, where the model folds beyond a certain threshold, and then put them together. You can still build up something that still looks 3D, but is just vector-based. So I wanted to do it with elevation. Uh, I started using uh, Daniel Hoffman's uh, model for creating terrain from a displaced plane. Um, the actual terrain itself looks great. But because it's just a plane with four vertices, Freestyle can't see it. So when you try and render it, all you get is that. It's absolutely <laughs> nothing there. Um, so unfortunately, I had to take that idea and just bin it and work out a different way. So using the Blender GIS plugin, you can bring in an elevation model and build it as a physical but still virtual uh, 3D mesh. So you get the same result um, on the right there, looking at the terrain. It's a lot more uh, processor heavy. Um, this poor laptop couldn't really struggle with it, um, so I now work on a desktop um, back home. But this is the result when you render it with Freestyle. And that's what I then use. So for my process through Wilderness Magazine, I normally get something like this, just a marked up screenshot of New Zealand uh, topo maps. And I'll bring that into QGIS, georeference it, and then add on some details to then export that out as a reference style. 
um, along with the DEM, and it's just standard DEM. New Zealand, we have an eight meter nationwide free um, elevation model that was developed by Roger Smith of Geographics, um, and it was developed for visualization rather than for terrain modeling or anything like that. So it's exactly what I need. So I'll bring that into Blender with the reference model, set up the angle, and then don't touch the camera again. And then I can render out the freestyle of it. Um, so this is what that would look like. But then I wanted to add in a few more details because you only get the terrain. I wanted the rivers, the lakes. So back in Hugis, just add some uh, lake and river outlines, and then I can bring them in as an emission texture for the, um, for the model um, so that there's no shadows, but it just adds the lines. So then you get, I'm not sure whether that's actually showing up on the screen, but it's just the subtle outlines of the rivers and lakes. But then I also wanted some shading, but I didn't want it to look natural with faded shadows. So I then took the um, natural shading and basically like quantized it in order to get a bit of a posterized view, something like this. And then with a bit of fading out and um, adding in gray rivers and lakes this time as fills, then we take the shading and it becomes something like this. Um, so there's just the subtle hill shading and then the lakes filled out. But then Wilderness asked me to do a different style of map. Uh, I did this topographic style for them. Um, this is the latest update that I did this year for all of the great walks across New Zealand. So with a bit of extra color, um, I wanted to add that in as well. And, but again, with the quantized style. So this is just the node setup of um, just adding the color to that, uh, if anyone wants to actually come and chat afterwards and I will happily talk it through. And so you go from the grayscale to then just the very subtle color being added in. To Illustrator, so this is where I just do the final details. Um, I draw in the routes by hand using a graphics tablet. I label the huts, label the peaks, um, major landmarks, uh, and then create a mask layer for that and fading out into the background in order to mask out the black lines so that they're not butting up against the black text. Again, I quite like labels to just be in a solid color. And then the final thing is I just add, and it probably won't come up on there, um, a very subtle just drop shadow behind the root just to bring it off the page slightly. And then we have the final map. So. I've taken this style in a few different directions. Um, this is a map on the right that I did for the New Zealand Alpine Journal, the Journal of the New Zealand Alpine Club. And it was for an article documenting my friend Nia's summer spent in the Darren Mountains down in Fiordland in the southwest of the South Island. She does amazing pen and ink line drawings. Um, these are some of her pictures from the article here. So I wanted, I thought oh, this style will probably go well with her drawings, um, so created this oblique projection um, of the Darren Mountains. Um, I also then did an orthographic uh, side-on view of Auraki Mount Cook for the 30-day map challenge a few years ago. Um, I then actually blueprinted it. I quite liked it, so I printed it on a t-shirt. <laughs> I've got it on my business cards, if anyone would like one of those. Um, and I plan to do this for a few other different ranges. And then just a final addition, I was gonna end it there, um, but final addition is in a completely different style. This is my map that you'll see in the map gallery. Um, I was lucky enough to get an honorable mention for the Atlas of Design this year. And I got asked literally last week before I flew over here to do maps for a backcountry cycle route in the Southern Alps. Um, and I sent a few designs, and the guy behind it liked this one, but liked the style of the perspective line work. So I sent a few examples, and then this is that area in my normal style, and then decided to add in the natural base map style of that Arthur's Pass map, um, and came up with this. So this is now the one that we're going with. Uh, for this signage. Um, it was 
just something that I'm not quite sure why I hadn't done before, but we'll see where it goes. It'll still have the vectored, uh, the vector roots and labels and everything on it. Um, but if you visit New Zealand in the next, well, probably after a year, once it goes through all the workings, then you might see this out in the backcountry if you're on your bike. So that's everything from me. Um, I'll just leave you with the Māori Whakatoki, or proverb. Um, Fire te iti kaharangi, ki te tuoho koe, mehe maunga teite. So pursue excellence. Should you stumble, let it be to a lofty mountain. Thank you. <laughs>